Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel alive. I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. At UBNRadio.com. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Rebel Hearts. This is your host, Christy Reeves, and I'm excited about another show we have going on today. Before I introduce you to today's guest, I just want to share a little something with you over here, what we have coming up in December. Um, as some of you know, or might have seen on my bio and my website on the UBN page, I've been studying all kinds of stuff for the last 20-something years, from psychosomatics to ancient wisdom to nutrition, like anything you can imagine in the book, applied kinesiology. And one of the things I really love teaching about is ancient wisdom. And as some of you know, I am from Germany, originally born and raised, and there's some really cool ancient wisdom that I feel like it's reawakening over there, some Celtic wisdom, some wisdom that was present before the Christianization of Europe. And next week, we actually have a festival called Sauvin, which is an ancient Celtic festival. And it is the night from October 31st to November 1st. And it was the night where they said the veils between the worlds are really thin and our ancestors come to visit. So what people did that in the evening of October 31st, they would lay the table for the loved ones that had transitioned over the past years and invite them to feast. So it's like an old tradition from the Celtic times. And that was celebrated on October 31st, which is now our Halloween. And then November 1st was actually the New Year, the Celtic New Year. So with November 1st, we're actually, in a way, energetically being asked to bring forth new beginnings. And you know, even though in the ancient times we were more dependent on agriculture and the weather and all these things, nowadays we can actually use that, that wisdom to feel really good energetically, emotionally, and spiritually. So my thing for you is, because, you know, I won't see you until the first, so get your New Year's resolutions ready for the Celtic New Year. What is it that you want to bring forth starting next Wednesday. I'll also be in Germany in December, and I did it last year, and I taught a class called the 12 Sacred Nights, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. I just want to let you know about it, and it's an online class that I'll be teaching while I'm in Germany, and it's a lot of fun. It allows you to complete the old and bring forth the new and set intention, have clarity about your goals and what you manifest, what work and what doesn't. It's, it's a really, really cool and really sacred and special time, and I'll sh share more with you in one of the upcoming shows. But let me introduce you today's, to today's guest. And I'm so honored that she's joining us today and sharing some of her wisdom and her journey with us. Dr. Yvonne Mayweather received a medical degree from George Washington University, followed by a residency in emergency medicine at King Drew University Medical Center in Los Angeles. She worked as an emergency physician for many years before making a switch to functional and age management medicine. She's excited to educate her patients about anti-aging and how to heal your body in a holistic way. And she has quite a journey that she, she's going to share a little bit about with us today. So let me welcome Dr. Yvonne. Hi, Christy. How are you? Thank you. And thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure. I'm so excited to chat with you because you've gone through such a tremendous transformation. Yes. And even since I met you, I've only met you a few months ago. It feels like mm -hmm. I've known you much longer. Though. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so before mm -hmm. we go into your journey, I actually want to start where it all started for you because... For the rebel hearts out there, if you're looking for inspiration, I always feel that the people I'm bringing on the show have had a specific journey that they went through to get them to where they are right now. And there might be some people out there who are looking yeah. for inspiration, might feel like, oh, I have something that I feel like I want to bring forth, but I don't know how, what it is or how I can find it. So sharing our hero's journey, yes. I find it's, it's usually a good way to start. Sure. Um, so... Yeah. Gosh, I'd have to say it probably started um, late in high school. Mm -hmm. I had a very stressful event. Okay. Um, and when I went off to college, I noticed that I started having 
uh, gut issues. Mm -hmm. I started having uh, abdominal pain and diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't have that when I was at home Mm -hmm. or prior. Mm -hmm. Never had that experience. Only when you went to school. Yes. And, you know, I just figured, you know, I went away to college Mm -hmm. and I'm eating out. Mm-hmm. That it's probably because of that, because yeah. I've always before I always ate mm-hmm. at home. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just noticed actually through the years it would get worse um, with with some stressful yeah. events. Yeah. Um, but particularly, I should say, when I was in uh, actually after I finished residency and uh, was you know a new mm-hmm. uh, ER. Mm -hmm. or emergency department physician, you know, I started to experience some fatigue. Interesting. And, um, you know, ran Mm -hmm. lab work Mm -hmm. on myself Mm -hmm. and couldn't figure out Mm -hmm. what it was. Everything Mm -hmm. looked normal. (laughs) Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. And I just happened to go into the health food store, Mm -hmm. and I was talking to one of the uh, ladies there, and she said, you know what, it sounds like you have adrenal fatigue. Interesting. I'm like, what is that? Mm-hmm. That's not something that uh, I've ever heard before. Wow. Um, so they didn't teach you about adrenal fatigue ever in medical school at that time? It or didn't exist didn't as exist. Uh, now it doesn't exist yeah. in allopathic medicine. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's either that the adrenal gland doesn't make cortisol any mm-hmm. longer or it makes way too much, much. Yeah. but there's not a continuum in between oh. which mm-hmm. in alternative medicine we recognize mm-hmm. and that many people yeah. are uh, having an issue yeah. with. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, she had recommended uh, some supplements for me mm-hmm. and lo and behold, in two or three days, my energy increased. I got much better. Mm. I said, gosh, this is really interesting. So I started mm-hmm. doing some reading on that. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, to make a long story short, um, there was one year, 2008, mm-hmm. I, was, I was working in an environment where it was extremely stressful, yeah. more stressful than normal. Mm-hmm. Um, I happened to be one of those uh, physicians that was trying to save Martin Luther King Hospital okay. when it was in trouble. Mm-hmm. And that was extremely stressful. Oh, my I can't imagine and uh, along with some other things, I just, my energy levels just tanked. Mm-hmm. And um, I had been doing some reading, as I said before, in regards to the adrenal uh, fatigue. Mm-hmm. And I just happened to uh, call a physician that was an anti-aging physician, mm-hmm. um, excuse me, age management physician. Mm-hmm. And actually, I should explain those two. Yeah, so um, what is the difference between anti-aging and age management? You know what? They really are the same. They're the same. In mm-hmm. that, like, I think it was back mm-hmm. in the 90s, mm-hmm. it used to be anti-aging medicine, but mm-hmm. um, the group basically split up. Mm-hmm. And so there is a group that's called age management medicine, okay. and then there's a group called anti-aging. But okay. It's pretty they're, much they're the one, same. They're, they're the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I immediately bonded with this mm-hmm. doctor because he was a burnt-out ER doctor. Mm-hmm. And um, he told me, you know what, I think I can absolutely help you. So I went to see him, ran labs. Mm -hmm. Um, One issue was that when he checked my antioxidant levels, they were basically zero. Wow. And I was like, how can that be when I'm taking all these supplements? Yeah. Because I had started Mm -hmm. taking supplements over the years. Um, And then also... You know, not al- along with the energy issues, mm-hmm. I was also, my gut issues had gotten mm-hmm. much worse. And it seemed mm-hmm. that, you know, I'm eating this healthy diet mm-hmm. of um, lots of fiber and grains. Yeah. And where, you know, fiber is supposed to make you have more bowel movements, yeah. it was actually constipating me. Wow. So it wasn't supporting any of the elimination processes? No, at not all. at all. Not at all. And... It came to be in that evaluation and working with him um, that I basically had something called adrenal exhaustion Mm -hmm. where my body just could not keep up any Mm -hmm. longer in making the the cortisol Mm -hmm. to support my needs Mm -hmm. for stress. And can we really quick before we continue to talk about what is because... 
there's there might be some people out there who don't know. Okay, what 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 are we talking about? With the adrenals, with the cortisol levels, with the stress hormone, adrenaline going through the roof. Yes. So can you just explain us just really quickly in, in a few words? What is the function of the adrenals? What is the cortisol? Yes. How does it show up in our body? And what do elevated cortisol levels do within our body? Yes. So. When it comes to your adrenal gland, mm -hmm. gosh, it's definitely one of the most important uh, mm -hmm. organs in your body. Um, in general, it makes your sex hormones, mm -hmm. and it makes some other hormones, too. Mm -hmm. um, and it also makes some neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. um, like epinephrine yeah. um, and some other ones. Mm -hmm. But one of, uh, one of the most important hormones comes from there, and it's called cortisol. Mm -hmm. Cortisol is your fight-flight mm -hmm. hormone. It protects you through stress. It gets yeah. your body ready for any stressful situation. Yeah. To get out of there, to get away and get us into Absolutely. safety, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, what happens when um, you, are, you have a stressful situation, your mm -hmm. cortisol goes up mm -hmm. and deploys all these mm -hmm. um, things to happen in your body so your body is ready yeah. for that event. Mm -hmm. That's normal. Mm -hmm. But what's not normal, if it's being called upon to do this continually, mm -hmm. chronic stress. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. so... Which you as an ER doctor are exposed to every day. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And of course, you know, mm -hmm. when I um, chose emergency medicine physician, you know, as uh, emergency medicine, I never thought that my lifestyle would be an issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just knew I was drawn to it, mm -hmm. but I never thought it would be an issue. Mm -hmm. Um, but what started happening in my body was that my cortisol levels were going up all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure mm -hmm. certain. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point that my, uh, adrenals could no longer support, uh, wow. the demand. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so what happens with that is when your cortisol levels go up, oftentimes many of your other hormones, mm -hmm. like your DHEA, a lot of male hormones, female mm -hmm. hormones, uh, mm -hmm. something like progesterone, something called aldosterone that's mm -hmm. important for uh, your sodium, mm -hmm. um, potassium balance. Yeah. All of those start to uh, fall mm -hmm. because they all come from the same substrate or same mm -hmm. chem, um, compound called mm -hmm. uh, cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So I uh, presented with my adrenal gland not being able mm -hmm. to support, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, the duties that it needed to mm -hmm. support in, in yeah. regards to stress. Yeah. And so, you know, you experience a fatigue that you just can't shake. I don't care how much sleep you get. Mm -hmm. You just, you can't shake mm -hmm. it. Um, you will also notice with adrenal uh, fatigue or mm -hmm. actually a better word to me is adrenal dysfunction. Mm -hmm. You can uh, experience brain fog or mm -hmm. a slowing of your brain. Mm -hmm. Gosh, you can experience, gosh, a multitude of things, a change in your body composition. You tend to be fatter, particularly mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. your middle. Mm -hmm. um, and because your sex hormones have really declined, mm -hmm. that's uh, important for your uh, energy and mm -hmm. even your libido, your mm -hmm. sexual function mm -hmm. starts mm -hmm. to decline. Mm -hmm. um, there's many things that start yeah. to occur when that when adrenal dysfunction comes into play. Yeah. And I'm just thinking about the way our society is set up nowadays where we're constantly mm -hmm. being exposed to stress levels, deadlines. I'm just thinking about absolutely. the stress of driving in Los Angeles traffic and getting yes, to places, getting absolutely. to the studio today. Absolutely. And, and <laughs> <laughs> the constant release of cortisol that our yes. body, you know, is, is doing and mm -hmm. not having you know, even the knowledge of what we're doing to our body. Absolutely. I just saw Bruce Lipton a few weeks ago. At, he mm -hmm. was live at Agape, and he talks oh, a lot about, you know, yeah. Yes. He talks a lot about in the way we're showing up where we're constantly under stress. Yes. And, and how many people are actually having adrenal fatigue without even knowing about it. Oh, most of my um, anti-aging and, and functional mm -hmm. medicine patients are in some level of uh, mm -hmm. uh, adrenal dysfunction. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. That's just maybe the best way to say, you know, it's the American way mm -hmm. to push, mm -hmm. to keep pushing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we want to be successful, mm -hmm. but at what cost? Yeah. And I feel like, 
I'm from the 800 people village in Germany and coming yes. to LA yes. and living in Vancouver and Vancouver's people at that time were like, okay, if we don't get it done today, we might get it done next week or next month. As long as we're having fun, yes. we're all good. But then coming to LA, there is such a virtue to say, to be able to say, I'm busy. Yes. And the more busier you are, it feels like the more value you have or the more value your life has. And I feel like that needs to be a change in thinking. Oh, that is absolutely. so necessary. A- ab- absolutely. Yeah. Um, so with that, um, I started getting so much better mm-hmm. with the anti-aging uh, treatment and protocols. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, one other issue that we needed to deal with mm-hmm. was that my gut was so much, uh, had gotten so much worse. Okay. Um, and that I, ha- I actually was hardly tolerating mm-hmm. many foods. Mm-hmm. And um, it ended up being that one huge um, issue for me when it comes to food was gluten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gluten, oh my goodness. Um, (laughs) One way of of finding out whether you have issues, Mm -hmm. food sensitivities Mm -hmm. um, to to food Mm -hmm. is to do something called like an elimination diet. Yeah. You know, eliminate the food for a certain mm-hmm. period of time and mm-hmm. then bring back foods mm-hmm. one by one to mm-hmm. see what your reaction is. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's important to know is that now food sensitivities are different mm-hmm. than food allergies. Yeah. When in allopathic medicine, when they're going to check for uh, allergies, they mm-hmm. do environmental, which could be pollens, molds, mm-hmm. and food, mm-hmm. which is something called an IgE. Okay. Reaction. Mm-hmm. That's a, a type of mm-hmm. antibody. Mm-hmm. But there's something called food sensitivities mm-hmm. that happen to spark or uh, cause a, a jump in IgG mm-hmm. antibodies. Mm-hmm. And it's not really recognized in allopathic medicine, wow. but most of us, most people are mm-hmm. tending to have more issues with that than mm-hmm. food allergies. Yeah. And so that's what I was suffering mm-hmm. from. I mean, I um, it ended up being that I had to follow uh, something called the paleo mm-hmm. uh, autoimmune diet, mm-hmm. where I'm on the paleo diet, which mm-hmm. is basically the hunter-gatherer diet, mm-hmm. what our bodies are in general tend to mm-hmm. work or be optimal mm-hmm. on, tend to mm-hmm. run the best on. Mm-hmm. Um, but... And with that, that's with, I'm going to say uh, it in these days, Mm -hmm. uh, how you would think of it, organic meat, Mm -hmm. uh, red meat, poultry, and uh, wild-caught fish, Mm -hmm. um, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. But no grains. No grains, no dairy, Mm -hmm. and no legumes. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have to eliminate also... um, Nuts and uh, nuts and seeds, which, yeah, just do a number on me. Okay. Um, so, in addition, I also have to eliminate something called nightshades, where mm-hmm. certain type of uh, mm-hmm. vegetables mm-hmm. that tend to um, uh, irritate your your joints, mm-hmm. cause joint pain. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm particularly very limited in terms of what you know I can eat, but mm-hmm. that's what has happened, what, that's what's developed yeah. over the years with just uh, extreme amounts of stress. Mm-hmm. And that stress actually affecting my gut. Interesting. In mm-hmm. decreasing your immune function in your mm-hmm. gut. We know mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. for a fact that mm-hmm. stress does mm-hmm. that to your immune yeah. system. Because all the energy goes to our adrenals and stuff having energy for our immune system to use to repair itself, right? Yes, yes. And But the important thing, take-home message, is yes. that, you know, you'll hear commercials mm-hmm. about um, your immune system. Oh, mm-hmm. it's 60, 60, 70% of mm-hmm. your immune system's in your gut. Mm-hmm. And that that's there for a reason. I mean, yeah. it's, it's super important, whatever, you know, your immune system is coming in contact mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. that... It uh, that must be something really important for mm-hmm. to keep you protected. Yeah. And so, 
foods, even mm-hmm. though we don't think mm-hmm. of it that way, but mm-hmm. foods, mm-hmm. you know, can be obviously can be very healthy for you, yeah. but they can do bad things mm-hmm. to you too. Mm-hmm. So, and that's something that mm-hmm. I find mm-hmm. in a lot of my yeah. patients that yeah. they have a lot of food intolerances along, mm-hmm. particularly mm-hmm. even uh, with uh, uh, chronic stress. Yeah. Yes. So, what were some of the tools that you were given to help? Stabilize. You know, I don't know what the right word would be. Your adrenals. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, uh, it, you know, depending upon what type of adrenal uh, dysfunction you have, mm-hmm. whether your cortisol is high mm-hmm. or whether your cortisol is low, mm-hmm. there are certain um, herbs and supplements. Mm-hmm. Something that you don't find in mm-hmm. allopathic medicine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Th- to help, uh, to help support your adrenal glands. There's something mm-hmm. called adaptogens, mm-hmm. which. For instance, like rhodiola or mm-hmm. ashwagandha. I mean, there's many yeah, different yeah. ones mm-hmm. that help your adrenals work mm-hmm. much better. Mm-hmm. Actually, at um, some point, I was also on uh, glanulars, mm-hmm. which are actually uh, freeze-dried um, parts of the particular gland mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. Um, that a person may be uh, having, you know, having issues with. Mm-hmm. Um, using that because those proteins they take out the hormones and stuff Mm -hmm. from them but those protein proteins help signal your gland to Mm -hmm. work much better Mm -hmm. so in that it just Mm -hmm. made me so much healthier along with you know obviously eliminating the foods that I was having Mm -hmm. an issue with Mm -hmm. and also uh supplementing my hormones that I was having an issue with yeah so that is yes. amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. I want to jump forward a little bit. Sure. Because you were, you shared with me you were diagnosed with cancer a while yes. ago. Yes, yes. And you went the allopathic route first? I did. And then I did. What, I'm, what I would love for you to share about, what were some of the obstacles you were running into? Mm-hmm. And what, because I know you've, you've, you said doing all kinds of other really awesome stuff that we're going to talk yes. about in a moment. Mm-hmm. And what were some of the things that made you go, there needs to be something more or there should be something more. What is that something more that I can do to heal myself? Sure. Um, actually, I absolutely want to talk about that. But there's one thing that I have to say first okay. before I, I get into that. Mm-hmm. I'm certain that my lifestyle Mm -hmm. and uh, the food intolerances Mm -hmm. absolutely infected my immune system Mm -hmm. to where I was susceptible to developing cancer. Mm -hmm. So I needed to I needed to get that out. And thank you for saying that. Sure. I feel um, so often we look at the physical issues and we don't look at. Let's say it's, it's, you know, the life circumstance. What else is contributing to whatever illness it is that we're going through? Yes. So thank you for saying, like, I needed to look at the life circumstance. I believe that this is what contributed to that. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Along with, mm-hmm. um, I believe, environmental toxins mm-hmm. that, um, that we're exposed to mm-hmm. that, you know, there's so many more than what our, our parents yeah, were exposed yeah, to yeah. that we have to mm-hmm. try to fight against. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, yeah, so I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer in 2013. I mm-hmm. um, found it myself, um, just noticed that there was a, a change in the contour of my breast, mm-hmm. and um, absolutely went the allopathic way. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I did do some advanced testing, some testing um, since I was able to catch the breast cancer early. I was estrogen positive, progesterone mm-hmm. positive, about 95% for both, mm-hmm. uh, HER2 negative. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those are just, those are just markers for uh, what makes the cancer grow. Okay. Um, I was on an estrogen blocker since I was uh, still menstruating. I was mm-hmm. on an estrogen blocker, which failed for me. Okay. Um, and can I say, was it, did I develop a resistance to it? Cause that can absolutely mm-hmm. happen, mm-hmm. but I believe part of it also had to do with that. I was not out of the emergency department yet. I still mm-hmm. was working mm-hmm. full time. Okay. 
um, I was in a I was in a transitional uh, period where I wanted to where I had this practice that mm-hmm. I was trying to build up, mm-hmm. but I was gra- gradually getting out of the emergency department. Mm-hmm. So you were working two jobs at the same time. Yes. Okay. Yes, which you know mm-hmm. w- was okay, but mm-hmm. you know I just I feel like it did. Um, I did sacrifice mm-hmm. my health yeah. for that. So um, I did have a, a recent bout of mm-hmm. it coming back. Mm-hmm. And um, now I'm just so fortunate that the treatments that I'm on now are working tremendously. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm feeling great. Mm-hmm. Um, there is some traditional um, medicine with it, but mm-hmm. the, it's not chemotherapy or uh, some of the other uh, therapies. It's, it's more of the more advanced uh, uh, first line Mm-hmm. treatments that they're doing now, mm-hmm. which is wonderful, and mm-hmm. that they're more targeted mm-hmm. to certain reactions of, that, of the tumor, yeah. so they're not as damaging mm-hmm. to, to the body mm-hmm. as, let's say, chemotherapy, where yeah. we yeah. know that yeah. it can damage, you know, Absolutely. so many, you know, it damages good cells and, and bad cells. And bad cells, cells exactly. Um, I'm fortunate in that, but mm-hmm. yes, I've, um, I am uh, uh, <laughs> using <laughs> other mm-hmm alternative mm-hmm. methods yeah. and uh it's been an experience i mean yeah. a wonderful experience mm-hmm. in that it's it's absolutely helping me mm-hmm. um one uh i started with was uh iv vitamin c mm-hmm. which uh we know particularly in alternative yeah. medicine hits the uh hits the stem cells yeah. of the cancer mm-hmm. uh and then also uh what i'm i'm currently doing is mm-hmm. something called iv mistletoe I just was told about it yesterday, and I had not even heard about it ever. And I know a lot of alternative medicines. So yes. share with us what is mistletoe. And it's been around for quite some time now because I found a few, quite a few... Many years. Mm-hmm. Many years. Not uh, really used so much in the um, United States as mm-hmm. it has been in Europe, particularly mm-hmm. like Germany and Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have a lot of experience with it, mm-hmm. um, but it is being used now uh, you know, with uh, alternative doctors mm-hmm. um, as an integrative therapy yeah. for cancer yeah. patients. And you know, it it, it functions in, in different ways, but it absolutely boosts your immune system to help mm-hmm. fight mm-hmm. the cancer. Yeah. So, um, and it is actually IV mistletoe. I mean, excuse me, um, mistletoe, Mm -hmm. the one that, you know, we get underneath Mm -hmm. the... Well, you usually usually kiss under, right? (laughs) Although there are different types of uh, plants, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. mistletoe, Mistletoe that's what I wanted to uh, mention. Yes. When we spoke, you shared something really beautiful with me last night. Mm -hmm. Well, you shared with me that... At the beginning, you were really looking for it on the physical level. No matter if it was, in, you know, at the very beginning, using allopathic medicine yes. and then going to the, the functional medicine route. Yes. And that you had the realization at some point that you needed to bring in the spiritual aspect. Yes. In order to heal. Yes. What happened? When did that come to you, Yvonne? Um. And first, in the beginning, I did use some uh, uh, alternative mm-hmm. methods, but I am certain that me really, uh, my spiritual side being called to me, particularly mm-hmm. last year, mm-hmm. um, is really helping me heal, mm-hmm. heal my body. Yeah. Because it's not only what you give your body, mm-hmm. but it's about you know, what your attitude is, what your moods are. Believe me, they do affect Mm -hmm. your cells Mm -hmm. and helping your immune system Mm -hmm. to fight the cancer along with the other modalities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Dr. Bruce Lipton, again, I'm back with Bruce Lipton. He talks about that 90% of our genetic defects are actually not genetic. They're caused by stress, such as toxins, chemicals. Absolutely. And emotional stress, and he actually contributes about 99% of the broken genes or gene mutation or sick cells, whatever yes. he calls it, to emotional stress. Absolutely. And, and I mean, it's amazing now. Science he's is brilliant. Actually, yeah. yeah. He's, he's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But yes, um, so he's delving into a science mm-hmm. called epigenetics, exactly. which um, 
is very important mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to functional medicine yeah. too yeah. in how the environment mm -hmm. affects mm -hmm. our cells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes when we think of environment, we're thinking of foods, mm -hmm. toxins, mm -hmm. um, other things. Yeah. But oftentimes we forget that the emotional or the the spiritual or the conscious mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of how like our thoughts, our moods, mm -hmm. stress, mm -hmm. how it affects yeah. our immune system, yeah. our and cells. Yeah. That's where we circle back to, again, to that stress that we're exposed to on a daily basis. Absolutely. And where we need to, in a way, have countermeasures. Yes. No matter if it's, you know, meditation, mindfulness, or just, you know, physical activity to release all that stress that we've been under all Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so are there some specific things that you will find, like, oh, this is really working for me. This is really putting me in a good, mindful state, or this is really yes. helping me when I have stress in my life, when I have stress at work, whatever is showing up in your life. Yes, um, absolutely. There are some practices that I do mm -hmm. every day, um, some breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. um, I also do uh, Qigong, mm -hmm. um, oh, Ophanim, mm -hmm. different meditations, mm -hmm. uh, different types of meditation mm -hmm. and um Mantras yeah. to help me mm -hmm. be more mindful mm -hmm. and, and be in um, really to bring out my spiritual side mm -hmm. and, and to make sure that I stay, um, that my system stays calm and it's not being overwrought with mm -hmm. so much stress. Mm -hmm. And I'm very much proud to say that, you know, I was introduced to this, to um to these meditations through uh, a university called the Buren University, mm -hmm. which is based in uh, Woodland Hills. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, Kobe. <laughs> yes, I actually. He's watching, I think. <laughs> yes, I actually um, mm -hmm. met the founder, uh, Kobe um, Foreman, mm -hmm. Dr. Kobe uh, Foreman, um, at a training seminar. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know, I look back and I say to myself, you know, he was brought into my life for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I'm certain that he was brought into my life to help me, to help me bring my spiritual side mm -hmm. um, out so I could mm -hmm. start truly healing. Yeah. Whole, you know, in a whole way. Mm -hmm. Not beautiful. just yeah. uh, mm -hmm. medicine that is so and alternative, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, supplements and, mm -hmm. and drugs. Yeah. Yes. That is amazing. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing that. And we actually Absolutely. met at the Bern University Summit. And when was it? In July. Yes. Yeah. Actually, it was during my birthday. During um, your birthday. Yes. Last we celebrated your birthday that but night. But you know what? <laughs> I, I had to be there. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a, an amazing, it's an amazing experience mm -hmm. where, you know, you're amongst people who want the same thing you mm -hmm. do in terms of, um, like that particular summit was about self-fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were doing practices that would, basically we were nourishing ourselves and, yeah. and taking care of our bodies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you leave there, you just mm -hmm. absolutely feel amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a, a, a wonderful experience. And yeah. um, I'm glad that I've been exposed to it and mm -hmm. have the honor to, yeah. to attend. Thank you. And you just mm -hmm. said just a very beautiful word that, and it always comes up at the summit. I've been doing that for like five and a half years now, yes. I think. The nurturing aspect. Oh, yes. And again, it feels like we, we prioritize so many things. We prioritize yes. our work. Yes. Other people, the family. Absolutely. We're, trained to to make sure everybody else is doing well the jobs are done the to-do lists are we can put a check mark on every single item on our to-do list yes. before we nurture ourselves yes and and i know dr foreman always talks about coming from a full cup absolutely and a lot of us are coming from an empty cup where there's nothing to give anymore and then it turns into dis-ease and i'm saying it dis-ease on purpose because yes. our body is out of ease right yes absolutely <laughs> and and what in, in you know 
learning about the ophanim, learning yes. breath work, going through summits where you for four days just nurture yourself and yes. be in a space of self-love. Yes. What are you, you know, what is some of the tools that you have learned that you're applying, that you're loving besides, of you know, you already mentioned the breath work and the mindfulness that nurtures Yvonne every day in her life? Well, you know what, taking time to make sure that I'm happy, mm -hmm. doing things that make me mm -hmm. happy. You know, tomorrow's not guaranteed for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. And um, we definitely need to start really living more in the moment and making mm -hmm. ourselves happy. Mm -hmm. um, when we do that, then any other relationship that we may be in, if mm -hmm. it's with our parents, with a, a, a friend, with mm -hmm. a partner, mm -hmm. you know, it those relationships are such much much more enriching mm -hmm. um so you know what i do i do a lot of um affirmations mm -hmm. um which i didn't do before but i do affirmations because i think it's important for me to do every day because i need to remind myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um how fortunate i am how grateful i am um because no, of course, I you I, no one would want mm -hmm. to uh, have cancer. But if I didn't have this, I'm certain that I wouldn't be in the position, mm -hmm. in the space that I am mm -hmm. today. Yeah. So. Um, I'm get, just getting full chills as you're talking about this. <laughs> yeah, but it's but yeah, it's, it's so true, absolutely yeah. the mm -hmm. truth. Yeah. Um, it's what we do with. Mm -hmm. uh, things that we consider negative in mm -hmm. our lives, how we get through those yeah. times mm -hmm. that makes us better people. Mm -hmm. And so this is all just a part of my journey yeah. into helping, you now having a practice mm -hmm. in alternative medicine mm -hmm. where I am sharing my story and helping people to um, optimize their lives by really treating themselves as a whole person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. How has all these things that you have learned from mindfulness, meditation, breath work, or even yes. that realization that this illness is a chance for me to transform my life? Absolutely. It's a chance for me to, you know, look at where am I on purpose and where am I out of purpose? And on purpose doesn't just mean for me career. It's it's all, it's like how do we show up in our lives? Where am I off purpose? Where am I on purpose? How has learning all these things about yourself and looking at your life affected your work with your patients? I have to bring that to them. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a much more effective mm -hmm. Clinician, yeah. if, you know, I, I very much believe in, you know, you need to, if you talk the talk, you need to mm -hmm. walk the walk. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought I was doing mm -hmm. that, but I wasn't mm -hmm. doing it completely. Yeah. And in doing it completely, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's healing me. Mm -hmm. And so I have to bring yeah. that to yeah. my patients. Mm -hmm. And, yes, you know, take care of your lifestyle. Have mm -hmm. much more... Uh, health, you know, healthy mm -hmm. lifestyles, mm -hmm. but that also includes taking care of yourself and being more spiritual. Yeah, that's yeah. super important, mm -hmm. and making sure that you're mm -hmm. happy. I love that. Yeah. Yes, it, it's mm -hmm. so. Yes, absolutely. Having to share that mm -hmm. with my patients, mm -hmm. you know, it mm -hmm. actually being a, um, I'm actually putting together some uh, some treatment protocols and absolutely um the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. is definitely mm -hmm. uh, a part of it mm -hmm. so you can now look at a patient's life who's been struggling with a certain chronic disease or acute illness yes. and you can go okay we need to take care of it on the physical level with functional medicine in yes. xyz way yes but you also now have the information when you can go to your patient and say Look at your life. So look at what's making you happy. Are you happy? Yes. Are you enjoy? Yes. Are you nurturing yourself? Are you taking care of yourself? Yes, and I and trying to get rid of those uh, negative relationships that mm -hmm. oftentimes pull us mm -hmm. pulls us down. Yeah, uh, that's it's important to mm -hmm. be positive and to stay yeah. positive mm -hmm. uh, because those yeah. uh, that mood, those feelings, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. only work in your favor mm-hmm. to keep you healthy. Yeah. When you were practicing allopathic medicine, yes. would you have ever thought that you would have to uncover, discover these things that you're uncovering right now? No. You know, of, of course, I would have never even thought that I would have become sick. Mm-hmm. But um, it's been a wonderful journey. Mm-hmm. Um, I love where this journey is going mm-hmm. because, you know, my life is even now so much more fulfilled. Mm-hmm than it was before. Yeah. Um, basically retraining myself mm-hmm. because, you know, becoming a physician, part of it is, you know, training yourself to be able to think and take care of people mm-hmm. even when you're tired. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely getting, has gotten better over the years. But, you know, it's, it's, it's important now for me mm-hmm. to take care of myself mm-hmm. and where I can uh, also bring that to my patients. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I would never have thought that this would have been my journey. Mm-hmm. Um, that after almost 20 years yeah. in emergency yeah. medicine. Yes. And I love it. I, we had Dr. Rudiger Dalko on the show earlier this year, and he yes. is the German pioneer of psychosomatic medicine. Mm-hmm. And what I love is... What he's been teaching for 40 years is exactly what you just shared with us. Oh, to wonderful. look at illness as our chance for transformation. Absolutely. To not see an illness as something that is negative, mm-hmm. something that we feel like we're being punished. Yes. Or where we're feeling ashamed because we didn't take precautions or we lived a certain lifestyle that got us sick. Yes. But to really look at it and go, what is this illness teaching me? Yes. And how can I use it to transform my life? Absolutely. I, it's such, such valuable lessons mm-hmm. yeah. that I'm being, you know, yeah. I'm being taught. Yeah, yeah. Yes. If you had one advice to the younger Yvonne, what would it be? Oh, <laughs> Get enough sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one thing I didn't do um, mm-hmm. uh, early on. Mm-hmm. Um always exercise and always thought I was eating well, mm-hmm. but nurture, nurture myself yeah, more. Yeah. You know, if my body is telling me not to do it, mm-hmm. then don't do it. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's telling you that yeah. for a reason. Yeah. So self-nurture. Mm-hmm. I want to finish up our conversation with one thing that connects to something we talked sure. earlier about, which is nutrition. Yes. And it feels like it's, you know, when I look at myself, when I look at the people around me, and I'm in this big wealth and a health, a health and wellness community yes. where everybody's really looking for the new thing for our nutrition. What what do you see or what advice would you have for someone who says, okay, I want to look at my nutrition. I want to look at making healthier eating choices. Where can I start? Gosh, you know, there are a lot of... Um, uh, like going to websites and looking for information on, gosh, like the paleo diet, mm-hmm. Weston A. Price diet, mm-hmm. particularly diets that are eliminating processed foods. Mm-hmm. I mean, getting back to eating like our grandparents mm-hmm. and great mm-hmm. uh, great grandparents ate, yeah. very simply, mm-hmm. um, that's what our bodies are um are are used to Mm -hmm. that's what our genes are used Mm -hmm. to not all of this processed foods Mm -hmm. and foods that have been genetically modified um that is causing issues Mm -hmm. and then all of these toxins but getting back to eating uh for instance um when it comes to meat, we have to call it organic meat, but that's yeah. just the way the meat was mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> which is like ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, um, and you know, eating as much organic mm-hmm. as possible, mm-hmm. plenty of fruits and vegetables, yeah. lots of fiber. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, most Americans only get probably about 25 grams of fiber mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. in a day, mm-hmm. where non industrialized countries get. At least 50 to 80 grams, which, believe me, it it affects, that's the food for the good bacteria in your Mm -hmm. gut. Mm -hmm. And to Mm -hmm. keep them nice and strong, you have to give them the proper food. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, getting back to uh, primal Mm -hmm. diets, Mm -hmm. old, you know, hunter-gatherer or uh, 
like Weston Price, where, mm-hmm. you know, he tends to, uh, he talks about like organ meats, mm-hmm. you know, going back to eating organ meats mm-hmm. with, with, where there's mm-hmm. a lot of nutrition, mm-hmm. if you can find yeah. it uh, mm-hmm. organic. Mm-hmm. That would be great. Yeah, and what I know about Boston Price, you also really talked about. Okay, what is it that grows in your neighborhood? Absolutely, and locally yeah. grown. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, because that will also uh, ensure that there's more mm-hmm. nutrients. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, yeah. at, um, as you uh, take the plant out of mm-hmm. the out of the ground, then mm-hmm. the nutrients start to decline. Yeah. And so, the sooner you can get it from uh, ground to plate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the more healthier it is for mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Yes. I love that. I remember I was really lucky when I was raised in that 800 people village. Yes. And my grandparents <laughs> had this big yard and my, my parents was actually on their backyard mm-hmm. and they had a whole asparagus field. So as little kids, we would go in the yard and pick asparagus. Yes. And then my dad would take us up the hill and they had a whole piece of property with apples. Yes. So we would go as little kids and just pick the apples from the tree and eat it. And that's how I grew up. And I don't think, mom, you're amazing. My mom never ever made a bake mix or frozen mm-hmm. fast food. I think in my whole life, yes. it was always made from scratch. A lot of things from the backyard or from the, you know, the grocery store and just, like I yes. said, never any preservatives. That's how I was raised. And, and that's it was just wonderful. Amazing. That's and wonderful. Really and I was fortunate in, in mm-hmm. that um, we had a lot of fruit trees mm-hmm. um, in the backyard. Yeah. And uh, that is, you know, particularly mm-hmm. ideal. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can, yes, yeah. have your own garden. Yeah. Um, and there's actually easy, much easier mm-hmm. ways now to mm-hmm. do it, Like particularly yeah. like when it comes to herbs. You can even yeah. grow them. In the windowsill. Yeah. I grow, I have a big patio and I grow my herbs on my patio. And I yes. have stackable planters and yes. it works. I have tomatoes. I even have an olive tree. The squirrels ate most of my olives, but there's some left yes, that I'm I harvesting this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's doable. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But that's definitely the way to go mm-hmm. if you can mm-hmm. have a garden and, yeah. and maintain it. That would, yeah. that's, that's ideal. Yeah. Amazing. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. Sure. What is your final message to the rebel hearts out there? A final closing message. You know, my final message is there's a place for allopathic medicine, but there's an absolute place for alternative medicine. Um, alternative mes- uh, medicine, particularly when trying to stay healthy, is the way to go. Um, if, uh, obviously you get very sick as I had been, um, sometimes you need to use allopathic and, um, uh, uh, alternative medicine, but take, excuse me, take care of oneself. Self-nurturing is super important and should be top on your, uh, number one on your list. Um, eat well. Eat clean, eat as much organic as you can. Exercise, super important. And sleep. Sleep is, is super important for us because if you don't uh, give your body time to um, restore itself, then you, the organ systems start to uh, fail you and along comes disease. That is beautiful. Thank you so much. Sure. Sure. It's my pleasure. I am so grateful that you were here today and shared your story and your journey and all your wisdom and knowledge. It's just absolutely an honor to speak with you. Yes. It was it was my pleasure. This was great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yvonne. And Robin Holtz up there. We will be back next Wednesday and Go to ChristyReeves.com and sign up for our newsletter because I'll be sending out information about the Sacred Nights class. And we're also going to be starting sending out all kinds of um, tidbits that we're learning on today on, on the shows. And you can also be updated when a new show is coming out, who the next guest is, when the replays are available. So go on our newsletter list. And if you want to hop on over to iTunes or iHeartRadio or um, YouTube and leave us a ratings and a review or on YouTube you can even talk about what is it that you, you're taking away from today's interview what is it that you learned and how is it inspiring you to change your life what is it mm-hmm. that you're walking away with 
from today's interview that you are now choosing to apply in your own life to create a life that is really filled with joy and happiness and peace and enough sleep. Mm -hmm. So share with us on our YouTube channel, Christy Reeves TV. And if you go to ChristyReeves.com, all the links are over there. And we'll see you again next Wednesday. And remember, in the meantime, to rebel on. Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. Music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com.